Please keep it quiet, Rachel begged of her ten-year-old son Martin. I finally got Annie to sleep, and I don't need you to wake her to wake up again. But, Mom. Martin protested, I was just playing. Martin glared at his infant sister Annie, who was sleeping in the playpen across the room. Besides, he added rebelliously, this is the living room, not her bedroom, Rachel sighed, then told Martin in no uncertain tone, if you have to play noisily, you can go outside to do it. When Martin just looked at her, obviously unrepentant, she sighed again and said honestly, You're old enough, I wish you'd try to help me out a little Martin just shrugged, still not happy that he was getting kicked out of the house, again, just because of a little baby. It's not fair Martin grumbled. But before he could hear his mother's response, Martin's four-year-old brother Bobby came running into the room, yelling excitedly for no apparent reason. Bobby. Rachel began, but almost immediately, another voice started adding to the noise as Annie woke up screaming. Oh no, Rachel groaned, looking very tired as she hurried over to comfort her daughter. Martin decided to take advantage of the distraction and hurried out the back door, trying to get out of sight before his mom asked him to grab a diaper. Outside, Martin muttered to himself it's not fair sometimes he really wished that he was still an only child. Before Bobby was born, he got all the attention from his parents and could play almost anywhere in the house that he wanted to. Now, his mom spent all her time with Bobby and Annie while he got told to be quiet and go outside. He even had to share his bedroom with Bobby, much to Martin's disgust. Though he didn't always show it, Martin did love his brother and sister. He just wasn't sure how to deal with them. Sometimes it felt to him like the only reason that they were there was to make things difficult for him. He couldn't play with Bobby without getting yelled at for being too rough, and he wasn't even allowed to pick Annie up. And if Martin was even in the same room with either of them, it seemed to invite trouble for him. It's just not fair, he repeated, frustrated at the way he'd been treated. I'm almost eleven, he growled, not some stupid baby grabbing his basketball. Martin started throwing it at the hoop in front of the garage, trying to burn off his frustration. After a short while, Martin started to forget about the incident, being too caught up in his practice. That night after dinner, Rachel sat back on the couch, feeding Annie, thankful that her husband Scott was helping with the dishes. Now if only Martin would try to help out a little, she said with a sigh. She spent all day trying to cook, clean, and look after three kids, and without any help. Scott tried to help out when he was home, but with him at work all day, and often working overtime, he wasn't around to help her too much. And when he was, he was usually almost as tired as she was. She frowned, shifting Annie over to her other breast, wishing that Martin at least would help out since was old enough. But unfortunately, he showed no interest in doing so. When Rachel had married Scott, years earlier, her head had been filled dreams of how great married life would be. However, she'd quickly learned that motherhood wasn't as easy as she'd imagined. Not that she minded too much. She just wished that she could take a break from it all. For just a little while. Watching over three children really took it out of her at times. Rachel winced slightly, looking down at Annie, then quietly told her that's enough for now she smiled at her daughter, then covered her breasts up again before raising Annie to be burped. Once Annie had been burped, and her diaper had been changed, Rachel put her to bed, looking forward to a few moments rest herself. However, when Rachel returned to the living room, she stopped and gasped. Martin, she snapped, staring at her son who was standing there, with mud all over his feet. Oh no, she cried, I just cleaned that carpet too. All Rachel could do was shake her head in frustration, looking at the footprints running across the floor. I'm sorry Martin apologized, looking guilty. Get those shoes off right now, Rachel ordered, already moving towards the vacuum. I wish for once you'd think before acting Rachel was practically in tears, you're not the one that has to clean your messes up. Just for once, I wish that you'd see what it was like but... Martin tried to protest, to no avail. No buts Rachel interrupted. Get cleaned up and go to your room. I don't want to deal with you right now Martin nodded and left, while Rachel continued to clean the floor for the second time that day. God I'm sick of this she muttered to herself, wishing that just for once Martin could see what she had to put up with. That he could understand how much she could use his help around the house rather than his making things worse.
If only, Rachel muttered aloud, knowing that there wasn't any way. Then suddenly she froze where she was, staring at her hands and realizing that there was a way. Oh God, she whispered, remembering something that she'd forgotten about for years. Something that her own mother had given to her. For the rest of the night, Rachel seriously thought about what she was considering. In the morning, Rachel followed her normal routine of fixing breakfast for Scott and getting him off to work. I'll see you later, honey, she said, giving him a kiss on the cheek as he went out the door. Then, once the door closed behind Scott, Rachel let out a sigh, then went to get Martin up. Time to wake up, she told Martin as she shook him, trying not to wake Bobby up at the same time. Can't I sleep in a little longer, Mom? Martin groaned. Rachel smiled. No. You've got to get up for school then with a playful swat to Martin's arm, Rachel said common. Hurry it up Martin just groaned again, but complied, enviously looking over at Bobby sleeping across the room. Rachel chuckled at the sight, then left the boy's room, returning to her own bedroom. Once there, she closed the door behind herself and, feeling very nervous, she reached into the back of her closet, and a moment later pulled out a small box. I never thought that I'd actually use this, she muttered, glancing inside to make sure that it was there. Once she'd verified that, she set the box down on the edge of the bed and moved in front of the full-length mirror on the closet door. She smiled faintly at the image that met her. That of a rather attractive 29-year-old woman. Rachel proudly stood up to her full height of five foot six, pushing her breasts out as far as they would go, chuckling at the image. There's still time to reconsider, she told herself, nervously picking up the box and eyeing it. She frowned, but held onto the box as she left the bedroom. In the living room, Rachel checked up on Annie whom she'd put into the playpen. Are you all right, honey? Rachel asked her daughter. Annie just giggled slightly, continuing to clutch her stuffed rabbit in her hand. Rachel played with Annie for several more minutes, then got up and headed for the kitchen. After a short while, Martin came in, already dressed and ready for breakfast. Morning, sleepyhead, she greeted him. Morning, Martin grumbled, already pouring cereal for himself. Rachel just sat back and watched Martin eat. When he was finished, she put his bowl in the sink, then sat back down across from him. When Martin moved to get up, Rachel gestured for him to remain seated. We need to talk, she finally said. What about? Martin asked, obviously confused. He saw that his mom looked serious, even nervously tapping her fingers against a small box that she'd set on the table. After taking a deep breath, Rachel said you don't understand how hard it's been for me around the house, and you haven't been helping Martin snorted in obvious disbelief. What's so hard about cleaning for a little bit, then watching TV for the rest of the day? He asked sarcastically. Rachel smiled faintly, wondering if this was going to be easier than she'd planned. And all you do is play, all day long. As well as making messes and lots of noise. Martin snorted again, while his mom continued that's why I wanted to talk to you. At this point, Martin started to get interested, though somewhat nervous at the same time. He couldn't help wondering just what his mom was up to, though he suspected that it might be an increase in his allowance, in exchange for a few extra chores of course. Ha he responded, not wanting to commit himself. For a moment, Rachel just continued to tap her fingers on top of the box, before finally stopping. She opened the box and pulled out a cup, that looked to be very old, and made entirely of copper. It was slightly smaller than a coffee cup, without the handle as well. Small but faint images decorated the outside, seeming to be scenes of various people. This Rachel announced proudly, is a family heirloom. When Rachel noticed that Martin didn't seem too interested, she added, and it's magic. That caught Martin's interest, as skeptical and disbelieving as it was. My grandpa, your great-grandpa, found this somewhere or other and discovered its magic. It's been passed down through the family since. So? Martin asked, wondering why his mom was telling him this story. It wasn't like her to lie to him, except of course for that Santa thing, but he suspected that this was a little different. But in spite of himself, Martin was getting curious. Rachel took a deep breath, then quickly said I had a similar problem with my mom when I was your age. She didn't understand me, and I didn't understand her.
I didn't realize that at the time. Rachel sighed, setting the cup firmly down in front of her. She made the same offer to me that I'm about to make to you. Since it helped me and my mom, I thought that it might help us too. Martin was beginning to get confused. What are you talking about? He demanded. I want to make a trade, Rachel burst out, blushing as she did so. She knew that what she was doing was not only wrong, but ridiculous, but she was sure that it would work. It had worked for her and her own mother. A trade? Martin echoed. Yes, Rachel said, I want to trade lives for one day. That way we could both get a better understanding of each other. And so that he'd appreciate what she did, Rachel silently added. Martin laughed, thinking how unusual it was for his mom to tease him like that, and half tempted to believe her. It certainly would be interesting if they could trade, as unlikely as he knew that to be. It could even have been fun. Deciding to humor her, Martin asked why not for a week. A week? Rachel repeated, not quite sure that she believed her ears. She hadn't intended to do it for so long, but then she realized that if a little bit was good, then more would be even better. Before her son could change his mind, Rachel stuck her hand out it's a deal it's a deal Martin said, shaking her hand and grinning. Rachel stood up, taking the cup with her to the sink where she filled it half full of water then returned to her seat. I've only used this once she reluctantly admitted to Martin. When I traded with my mother for a day her eyes faded slightly and she smiled faintly, remembering that day from years earlier, shortly after she turned twelve. Suddenly realizing that Martin was looking at her, Rachel returned her thoughts to the present. I don't know how it works she admitted, but it does. You can fill it with water, juice, milk or anything like that. And then… She smiled nervously, staring at her own fingers, one person drinks from it. When the next person drinks some of it, they trade lives. Martin was quiet for a moment, seeing that his mom definitely looked serious. But she couldn't be telling the truth, could she? What if someone else took a sip then? He asked, proud of himself for figuring out the weakness of her story. Honestly, Rachel answered, I'm not sure. I think that after two people trade, the cup probably resets for the next two people. I don't really know for sure. For the next several moments, they both just sat there, staring at each other. Rachel wondered if she was making a mistake, turning a little boy into an adult woman. But then, she reminded herself that it hadn't harmed her any, and the magic would take care of everything. She hoped. One week Rachel muttered to herself. Then before she could change her own mind, she said cheers and took a deep sip of the water. Once she was through, she set the cup down on the table and silently slid it over to her son. Martin looked at the cup in front of him, beginning to feel nervous. She looked so serious about it all. What if she was telling the truth? What if they were going to trade places? Then Martin thought that it might be kind of neat to be a grown-up. It could be fun. Shrugging, Martin picked up the cup and drank down the rest of the water. Almost immediately a pleasant warmth began to fill Martin's stomach. From there, it began to spread out, quickly covering his entire body with not only a warm feeling, but a strange tingling as well. Sort of like when his leg fell asleep, though not nearly as uncomfortable. Next, Martin started to feel lightheaded and dreamy, with his thoughts beginning to get confused and cloudy. He tried to yawn, but nothing came out. Then, everything went quiet, and Martin's eyes got heavy, closing on their own. For several minutes, Martin was lost in the strange warmth that filled his being, floating in an imaginary sea. Then the warmth began to fade, and Martin's thoughts began to get clearer. Feeling his senses beginning to return, Martin opened his eyes and said, Boy, that was weird. Pausing at the strangeness in his voice, and more importantly, at the sight that was facing him. Martin's jaw dropped and all he could do was stare across from him, seeing his own face looking back. Oh my! He whispered in shock. It worked Rachel exclaimed, surprising Martin slightly by hearing his own voice. She stood up, looking down at her new body with amazement, while Martin just stared at his own hands, hardly believing that it was real. Martin stood up himself, feeling slightly unsteady. He looked down, seeing his mom's breasts pushing out from his chest. He saw her body, 
wearing her clothes. Wow was all he could think to say, amazed that it had actually worked. That they'd actually traded bodies. Slowly, Martin took stock of his body, realizing that even though he was obviously taller than before, and even had breasts, he didn't really feel very different. He felt sort of, normal. He was slightly confused at that, and then by the strange thoughts and feeling he was beginning to notice. Just then, a loud crying startled Martin, nearly making him jump. Rachel chuckled wickedly in Martin's body, then smugly announced it looks like Annie needs something then with an evil grin she added and I think she's hungry Martin looked at her for a moment, not really comprehending at first. Rachel just chuckled, then said I guess I'd better get going. Wah, where? Martin asked, feeling confused. I'll see you after school, M.O.M. Rachel responded, then quickly hurried out the front door. Martin stared at the door for a moment, then he realized that Annie was still crying shoot he muttered, filled with a sudden urgency. Martin immediately went into the living room and gently lifted Annie out of her playpen. Her crying eased up, and he found himself saying they're there. It'll be all right sweetheart Martin didn't spend any time thinking about the fact that sweetheart was his mom's pet name for Annie. Nor did he think about it much as he instinctively lowered his shirt, bearing his naked breast and holding Annie to the nipple. As Annie began to hungrily suck, Martin smiled, thinking how nice that felt. Suddenly, he realized how strange that was for him, but at the same time, how natural it felt. How normal. It was almost like he'd done it before, lots of times. But then Martin realized that he had. Or at least he remembered doing it before. He was startled by the realization that he could actually remember breastfeeding Annie before, and lots of other things. Oh my he gasped in surprise, wondering just how much he had traded with his mom. However, he knew that he didn't have time to worry about that at the moment. Not with Annie still needing to finish eating and then have her diaper changed. Martin smiled as he looked down at his sister, who was contentedly sucking at his breast. He suddenly felt very protective of her, very maternal. Uncertain, but accepting these new feelings, Martin said there you go sweetheart. When Annie had finished eating, Martin burped her, somehow knowing that this was the right thing to do. Then he changed her diapers, doing an expert job, in spite of the fact that he'd never changed a diaper before in his life. Martin didn't know exactly how, but somehow he just knew what needed to be done, and could do it. After he was finished with the diaper, Martin held Annie, rocking her gently back and forth, surprised to find just how much he enjoyed that simple act. He'd never really been allowed to even pick Annie up, but there he was, taking care of her on his own. Once Annie was sufficiently tired, Martin set her back into the playpen for a nap. I guess now I can watch TV, Martin decided. But as he went over to turn the TV on, something seemed wrong. There was a feeling that he still had something to do though. Martin frowned for a moment, trying to figure out what that could possibly be, when his eyes caught sight of the vacuum cleaner in the corner. Oh, he sighed, suddenly realizing that if he was now his mom, then it was his job to clean the house. Something inside of him seemed to confirm this. Martin unwound the power cord and got ready to start vacuuming the living room, then stopped when he realized that the noise would probably wake any back up. Sighing, he knew that he'd have start at the other end of the house, or wait until Annie was up again. But before Martin could make up his mind which, he noticed Bobby standing in the doorframe, but naked and yawning. Bobby! Martin gasped, you've got to put some clothes on and oh Bobby exclaimed, sticking his lip out, I don't want to come on Martin's side, walking towards Bobby, let's get you dressed no Bobby said again, then turned and ran when Martin got too close. Martin winced and called out get back here, but Bobby ignored him. Groaning to himself, Martin started chasing after Bobby. In spite of his much smaller size and age, Bobby was surprisingly adept at dodging Martin, and it took a whole 15 minutes to catch him. And by the time that Martin had caught up with Bobby, who was excitedly running around, and obviously having fun at their game, the noise had woken Annie up, and she was screaming. Gotcha Martin said once he'd finally stopped Bobby. He held on tight, looking towards Annie's playpen and wanting to check on her, but not wanting to have to chase Bobby down again. I'll be there in a minute Martin called out to Annie, beginning to feel a little stressed. After putting Bobby back in their bedroom, Martin told him to get dressed, 
then he hurried back to take care of Annie. Once Annie was calmed back down, Martin returned to Bobby, who still wasn't dressed and had to practically force dress his brother. It was only after all this was done that Martin was finally able to begin on the housework. Rachel sat in her, or actually Martin's class, grinning to herself. It was great to be back in school, with nothing to worry about. No responsibilities and no kids to look after. Though she felt slightly guilty for having made the trade in the first place, she reminded herself that it was temporary and that Martin would gain all the abilities he needed to deal with it. Still, she couldn't help thinking how amusing it was to think that she finally got the vacation she wanted. Even going so far as to vacation from herself. Absently, Rachel put her hand to her crotch and squeezed it, thinking how strange it was to have a penis of her own, even if it was just in ten-year-olds. Just as strange was the fact that she felt comfortable with it. Suddenly realizing that someone might see her, Rachel pulled her hand away and tried to pay attention to the teacher. She knew that she didn't really need to pay attention since she'd gone through that stuff herself when she was at school the first time, but she decided that maybe she'd help Martin out a little while she could. Besides, she was actually enjoying herself, even finding it a little exciting. In spite of herself, Rachel found her mind drifting again. First towards the two boys who were sitting next to her and joking around, and then to her own thoughts. Rachel chuckled and wondered why she'd never tried using the cup before, at least on her own. It was definitely interesting so far, and she could barely wait to get home and see how Martin was handling it. For most of the morning, Martin was kept very busy. If it wasn't Annie, crying out for something to eat or for her diaper to be changed, it was Bobby who somehow managed to keep getting underfoot. Martin was surprised that he'd managed to get any housework done at all, though he'd barely had a chance to even sit down for a minute. This is more tiring than I thought Martin sighed as he shoved some dirty laundry into the washing machine. How could Bobby have gotten two shirts wiped out in just one morning? Martin wondered aloud to himself. It's not like he was even playing outside then at that, Martin suddenly realized that he hadn't heard anything from his brother in almost half an hour, and began to get worried. However, he was relieved to find that Bobby was just in their bedroom, sitting blank-faced in front of the TV and watching Teletubbies. Martin was relieved that he didn't have to worry about that for a little while at least, and hurried to get as much done as he could while Bobby was still distracted. Just a little while later, Martin took a break from the housework and headed to the kitchen to make lunch. He immediately noticed that the cup was still sitting out, and after a quick glance towards Bobby, he very carefully put it away. He didn't want any accidents to happen. Once he was done with that, Martin returned to fixing lunch for Bobby and himself. He couldn't get over how strange it was to do so. How easy it was for him to reach the shelves that were normally out of reach, and how odd to actually make the sandwiches himself. However, as Martin was fixing his favorite, peanut butter and jelly, he realized that it just didn't look too appetizing. Instead, he felt like he wanted something else. After giving the peanut butter and jelly to Bobby, he fixed himself a tuna fish sandwich, which seemed more acceptable somehow. Quit blowing bubbles in your milk, Martin told Bobby, sitting down at the table himself so that he could begin to eat. I was just playing. Bobby protested. Martin shook his head. I know, and you're not supposed to play with your food. Bobby just stuck his lower lip out in a firm pout, then went to work on his sandwich. Once lunch was complete, Bobby disappeared into their bedroom while Martin wiped down the table, then went to clean the bathroom. I'm almost done, Martin told himself as he began scrubbing at the toilet. Somehow, he knew that normally his mom usually did the bathroom only once or twice a week, and strongly suspected that she'd held off a couple days just for him. Just like the laundry, it wouldn't normally be this bad. Martin just shrugged and knew that there wasn't much he could do about it except clean up the mess, or let it sit. And leaving it to get worse wasn't really an option, especially since he'd still have to do it later anyway. Rachel giggled as she neatly dodged the boy trying to tag her. Missed me, missed me. She called out behind her. Rachel was enjoying the simple game of tag with the other students during recess. It was certainly different from her usual day, and more carefree. Suddenly several of the boys that Rachel was playing with stopped, and she wondered what for. Then she noticed a couple girls walking up. 
One of them, a cute blonde, asked can we play? And no way one of the boys Rachel was with exclaimed. The boy, named Tommy, added you're just a bunch of girls another of the boys added we don't want cooties. Yuck and started laughing at the look on the girls' faces. Without realizing it, Rachel found herself laughing along with the boys, thinking girls are so gross then she froze, realizing just what she'd been thinking and wondering where that had come from. Ah uh oh she muttered, nervously glancing towards the girls and realizing that she was feeling rather strange towards them. After reminding herself that she was just experiencing some of the effects of the trade, Rachel went back to playing with the other boys, putting the incident out of her mind. It wasn't long after lunch that Martin finally got to sit down and relax. Annie was fast asleep in her playpen, which he knew wouldn't last too long, while Bobby was taking a nap in their bedroom. For the first time since he traded, Martin was able to sit and take in what had happened to him. This is so unbelievable, he said aloud, then stopped and glanced nervously in the direction of the playpen. It had taken him long enough to get Annie to go back to sleep that he had no intention of waking her back up again. Martin took care to be quiet while he watched some TV, though nothing was on but talk shows and soap operas. Normally he would have immediately changed channels, but this time they actually seemed a little more interesting, so Martin just left the channel where it was. He did feel a little guilty though thinking that he should probably do more cleaning, but knowing that he'd already gotten most of it that morning and there wasn't much more to do. At least not for the day. Trying to make himself more comfortable, Martin shifted positions and crossed his arms on his chest, or at least tried to. He was slightly startled by the way his breasts got in the way, and more startled to realize that he'd barely noticed them since he'd gotten them. They felt almost normal. The more Martin thought about it, the more he realized just how easily he'd accepted his new body. Of course he'd been too busy all morning to examine himself, or even take time to notice the differences. But there were some differences. In fact, there were a lot of them. He'd noticed a real big one when he'd went to the bathroom earlier. However, he'd been too busy to even take much time out for a bathroom break, so couldn't really look at it. He was beginning to get curious about his new body. On the one hand, he felt perfectly normal, as if he'd always been that way. But on the other hand, well, he knew that it was very different from what he was used to. Martin gently touched the breasts that were pushing out from his chest, smiling at the memory of how Annie had been sucking from them. He'd already gotten a good look at them while feeding her, but he wanted to examine the rest of his body as well especially the strangeness between his legs. Getting up, Martin started towards his parents' bedroom, stepping off his shirt as he did so. Once he got there, he continued to undress until he was naked. As Martin looked over his body, he thought that he should feel some sort of thrill for doing something he shouldn't, but he didn't. Instead, he felt just normal. He couldn't even help but thinking that his thighs were too big, which confused him slightly since he'd never cared about anything like that before. Martin looked into the mirror and saw his mom looking back, thinking that she really didn't look that old. Not like he'd always thought anyway. His reflection, or more precisely his mom's looked back at him with a smile. She had reddish-brown hair, a cute and attractive face, and somewhat medium-sized breasts. He looked back and forth between his body, and the reflection of it in the mirror, carefully looking over every part of himself. After a thorough examination of his new body, especially between his legs, Martin was disappointed. It just wasn't all that exciting. Not like he would have thought. It was different, but it didn't really feel so. Shrugging, Martin got dressed again and returned to the living room to watch some more TV. Martin frowned as he looked through the cupboards in the kitchen. It had dawned on him that he was the one that would have to make dinner as well, and when he'd looked in the kitchen he'd found the groceries were rather low. I guess I have to go shopping, he said to himself grinning. For once, he'd be able to get what he wanted to eat. No nasty veggies for me, he practically sang. After gathering up a hyperactive Bobby, whom he just knew he was going to have trouble with, and a somewhat cranky Annie, Martin took them out to the minivan in the driveway. He paused and stared at it in wonder, not quite sure if he could drive it. Though he knew that so far he'd seemed to know whatever he needed to know to be his mother, he wasn't confident yet that it extended to driving as well.
Martin carefully put Annie into her car seat, smiling at her and relieved that she seemed to be calming down some. I don't want to go Bobby whined, while Martin just shook his head and strapped him into the back seat next to Annie. Then it was his turn. Feeling somewhat nervous, Martin climbed into the driver's seat and looked at the dash. Then he laughed, knowing that he wouldn't have any trouble driving at all. Everything seemed so simple, as if he'd done it for years. Still chuckling, Martin started up the van and backed out of the driveway, on his way to the grocery store. Almost as soon as they'd gone by a McDonald's, Bobby suddenly tried jumping out of his seat, begging Mommy, can we go to McDonald's? I want to go to McDonald's but we just had lunch Martin told him in annoyance. However, that didn't seem to bother Bobby, who continued to go on about the restaurant for several more minutes. Then almost as soon as he'd stopped that, he piped up I've got to go potty Martin just groaned and shook his head. Once they finally arrived at the grocery store, Martin found that things hadn't improved any. Bobby kept trying to run off, making Martin chase after him several times and threatened to tie him to the cart. And almost as annoying was the fact that every time Martin looked the other way, Bobby somehow managed to grab something off the shelf, leaving Martin to put it back. And if Bobby wasn't enough, in the middle of the store, Annie suddenly started crying. Martin winced at the loud scream and felt humiliated at the way everyone was giving him dirty looks. It'll be all right, he tried calming Annie, though it didn't seem to help. Finally, Martin had to take her outside the store until she calmed down again. Eventually Martin had finished getting what he needed and went through the checkout line. Without thinking about it, he'd pulled the checkbook out of his mom's purse and opened it. Then he paused, staring at the blank check and wondering how he was going to fake his mom's signature. After a second however, he decided that the trade had taken care of everything else so it had probably taken care of that as well. At least he hoped that it had. Here goes nothing he muttered under his breath, signing the check. Martin was immediately relieved to see that it flowed out naturally in his mom's handwriting, even feeling perfectly normal to use her name. Martin was amused that some teenager who was older than he normally was but somehow looking young and immature to him now, was carrying his groceries and loading them into the van for him. After thanking the boy, Martin sighed in relief, eager to return home and start getting dinner ready. Rachel giggled as the boy next to started carefully using an ink pen to color in the pigtails of the blonde girl sitting in front of him. It reminded her of how she'd been teased back when she was a little girl, but this time it seemed so much funnier. Then as the girl realized what was happening and screamed, Rachel burst out laughing even harder. Almost immediately the teacher, Mrs. Bernhardt came over, scowling and demanding to know what was going on. Rachel stopped laughing and tried unsuccessfully to keep the smile off her face. Fortunately the other students, especially the still screaming girl and the guilty boy were distracting Mrs. Burn hard enough that she didn't notice Rachel. With as much fun as she'd been having, Rachel was almost disappointed when class ended half an hour later. She wasn't quite sure how she was going to face Martin, or, gulp, Scott. It was only now that she realized that she'd have to call him dad and pretend that he really was. That was just one of the downsides of the trade, she realized. Rachel put these thoughts out of her head and rushed to the school buses along with all the other students. A short while later, Rachel had returned home and ran to the front door, barely pausing long enough to throw the door open before she ran inside. Almost immediately a delicious smell tickled her nose, and she saw Martin and her body stepping out of the kitchen. The door that she'd thrown open quickly slammed shut behind her with a loud bang, and Martin gave her an evil glare, then whispered shh and gestured towards the playpen where Annie was sleeping. Sorry Rachel whispered, feeling embarrassed. Though she hadn't meant for the door to make any noise, she hadn't thought to stop it either and she better than anyone should know to keep it quiet while Annie was asleep. Rachel quietly walked over to the playpen, glancing inside at Annie who looked to be sleeping soundly. She smiled, then looked over at Martin, who surprised her a little in her body. Especially at how natural and womanlike he was moving, though she had expected that. But still, to actually see it was somewhat different. He, or actually she, seemed rather tall to Rachel, and looked somewhat old. That last observation made her frown, wondering if she really was that old.
She'd always thought that she looked rather young for her age, but now, now her body just looked so old, so mature, so authoritative and motherly. Rachel wasn't sure exactly how that made her feel. Martin glanced over at his mom again, thinking how strange it was to think that it was his mom in the body of that little boy. He shook his head, surprised at just how young that boy looked as well, especially since he'd never thought of himself as that young. Shaking his head, Martin turned away from his mom and returned to the kitchen to finish dinner. A short while later, Martin's dad returned home from work, looking slightly tired. Are you all right? Martin asked him. His dad gave him a smile and said better now that I see your pretty face than before Martin realized what was happening, his dad had wrapped his arms around him and pulled Martin in close for a kiss. Martin could feel a tongue sliding past his lips and moving around his own mouth, surprising him enough that he didn't resist. In fact, he instinctively started kissing back, surprising himself with that reaction. When they pulled apart a minute later, Martin gasped for breath and muttered wow, looking at his dad in an entirely different light. He couldn't believe what he'd just done, but it had seemed so, right, somehow. Martin smiled at his dad, who was smiling back, realizing that he didn't feel the same about his dad. He still cared for him, but it was different somehow. For one thing, he didn't seem to radiate the same sense of protectiveness and intimidation. Some protectiveness, yes but something else as well. Martin decided not to worry about it and whispered dinner's ready then while his dad went to the table, he went into the living room and saw Bobby on the floor coloring and his mom on the couch, playing with his Game Boy. Dinner's ready, honey Martin told her, not noticing the instinctive use of the nickname. Throughout dinner, Martin kept glancing over at the boy sitting across from him, amused at the idea that it was his body and his mom's mind and at the same time, he also kept glancing over at his dad and slowly came to the realization that he wasn't thinking of him as dad anymore. Instead, he had somehow started to think of him as Scott. Several times, Martin had to tell Bobby stop playing with your food earning him several amused looks from his mom. When dinner was almost over, Martin noticed that the peas on his mom's plate had barely been touched, and she was swirling her fork around in them and looking unhappy. It took Martin a moment to realize just why. He hated those vegetables. He didn't even really know why he'd cooked them, except that he thought that they'd go good with the rest of the meal and would be healthy. He hadn't even been bothered at all when he ate them like he normally was, but she obviously was. Seeing that she was about to get up from the table, Martin firmly told her no leaving the dinner table until you've cleaned your plate. You know the rules. That earned him a glare from her, though she almost immediately stuffed a fork full of peas into her mouth, looking like she was going to gag. Scott just smiled and said great dinner Rachel, then leaned over and gave Martin a quick kiss on the cheek before he got up, leaving his empty plate on the table. Martin blushed, feeling rather warm from it, and happy. Then he got up himself and started to clean off the table, hoping that his mom hadn't noticed. Though there was also a tiny part of him that actually hoped that she had. By the time Martin had finished cleaning off the rest of the table, his mom was finally finishing up her peas. The very sight of her trying to choke them down made him smile to himself, though he took care that she didn't notice. Even Bobby had finished his food before she had. It seemed perfect justice for all the nights that he'd been forced to sit at the table and finish off some vegetable or other. Martin put the dishes into the dishwasher and cleaned up the rest of the kitchen, feeling rather tired and looking forward being able to sit down and rest. He'd been going nearly non-stop all day. However, Martin still wasn't able to rest just yet. His breasts were beginning to feel rather swollen, and he knew that this was because they were too full of milk. I hope Annie's hungry he muttered, knowing that he had the breast pump in the closet in case she wasn't. Rachel yawned loudly, trying to stay awake through the rest of the movie. She didn't know why she was so tired that early, but she was. She didn't notice the look that Scott and Martin gave each other, though a moment later she did hear Scott say bedtime kids Rachel turned and looked at him, groaning as she saw the look on Martin's, or more precisely, her, face. Hurry up dear, Martin said with a smile, you've got to get up early for school all right, mom she replied, reluctantly getting up and heading to the bathroom to brush her teeth.
As she did so, she thought about the day's events, amazed at what had happened even though she was the one who had planned it. Once Rachel had finished cleaning up and changing into the Batman pajamas that were Martin's favorite, she returned to the living room. Scott grinned at her, then playfully tussled her hair, saying night Marty night dad she said, surprised at just how easy it was to call him that and how right it felt. He certainly felt a lot more like a dad than he did anything else. At least now he did. Rachel tried to hold back a yawn, without much success, while her new dad just grinned. Reluctantly, Rachel started to walk towards Martin's bedroom while he followed behind her. She was somewhat startled when Martin playfully slapped her on the rear and said hurry up honey. Rachel smiled faintly and continued stumbling towards the bed, though at a slightly quicker pace. After Rachel had climbed in and gotten comfortable, already feeling sleepy, Martin tucked her in, much like she did to him every night. Night honey Martin whispered, then bent over and gave he a kiss on the forehead. Rachel smiled dreamily and tiredly mumbled back goodnight mommy before closing her eyes and being overcome by sleep. Martin returned to the living room and sat down next to Scott on the couch. So we're finally alone he whispered, giving Martin a playful kiss on his cheek. Martin smiled from the attention and the warm dampness that was beginning to develop in his crotch. Though he'd never felt anything like it before, Martin instinctively knew what it was. Smiling faintly, he just scooted closer to Scott and leaned up against him. For the next hour, Martin cuddled close to Scott, feeling happy and secure next to him. Though he suspected that Scott wanted something more, Martin felt perfectly satisfied just as he was. Scott occasionally nibbled on Martin's ears, making him giggle slightly, though otherwise Scott just held Martin close. Though Martin had already been tired, having eagerly looked forward to his chance to rest, he still wasn't going to go to bed. He loved his new freedom to stay up as late as he wanted, relaxing from the day's stress and feeling so very comfortable. After a while, Scott excused himself and got up, saying that he still had to go to work in the morning. Martin sighed and started towards the bedroom himself, knowing that he would have to get up early as well. After Martin had cleaned the makeup off of his face, he undressed and slipped into a thin nightgown of his mom's. Good night honey Martin said seductively, giving Scott a kiss before climbing into bed. Once the lights were off, he could feel Scott's presence in the bed next to him, finding it oddly comforting. And though he felt that Scott still wanted something else, they were both too tired and quickly fell asleep. That night, Martin dreamt strange dreams, which he was unable to remember upon waking. It was the shrill sound of someone screaming which woke him up. At first Martin groggily looked around, then realizing that it was Annie, he quickly hurried to her bedroom, right next to theirs and picked her up. It's all right he whispered to her, carefully trying to calm her down so as not to disturb Scott anymore. Fortunately he seemed to have developed an immunity to her crying since he was still asleep. Once Martin had fed Annie and changed her diaper, she was in a much better mood and quickly went back to sleep. He eagerly followed her example and crawled back into bed again himself. However, Martin was woken up again twice more during the night by Annie, each time having to quickly change her diaper and put her back to bed. When morning finally came, it was the sound of an alarm clock that woke Martin up, instead of being shaken awake like he normally was, or the crying from the night before. Martin groaned, forcing his eyes open and seeing Scott climbing out of bed. Then he closed his eyes again and let himself start drifting back to sleep. A short while later, Martin found himself being gently shaken, which was closer to what he was used to. Groaning, he opened his eyes again, only in time to see Scott's mouth descend on his own with a kiss. Morning honey, Scott said with forced cheerfulness a moment later. Martin smiled back groggily, then climbed out of bed himself. He'd noticed that Scott was already dressed, and somehow knew that would have already showered as well. While Scott left the bedroom, Martin removed his nightgown and slipped on the soft fuzzy robe that was draped over a chair near the bed. He'd seen his mom wear it plenty of times, but mostly he put it on because it looked so comfortable to wear that and the soft slippers he slipped on afterwards, before going to the bathroom to relieve himself. After that was done, Martin went into the kitchen, where Scott silently handed him a cup of coffee. Martin sniffed the dark brown liquid, then took a cautious sip. It was hot, but tasted good. He'd never had coffee before, and decided that he liked it.
especially the way it helped him wake up a lot quicker. For a short while, Martin sat at the table with Scott, each sipping their coffee and neither saying a word. Then Scott glanced at his watch and said I'd better be going Rachel he gave Martin a quick kiss on the cheek and said I'll see you after work then with that, he hurried out the door. Martin watched him back out of the driveway in car, then take off down the road. Once Martin had finished his cup of coffee, he headed to the bathroom and took a shower, finding it surprising just how much shampoo he had to use in his new hair. That and the conditioner which he knew he had to use as well. He even found himself shaving his legs and under his arms, which seemed at the same time odd yet natural. Afterwards, he dried his hair and got dressed, then started to apply makeup. The makeup went on with great ease, with Martin applying it with a steady hand and the skill that comes from years of practice, even though it was his first time. Pausing in front of the mirror to inspect himself, Martin smiled, knowing that he was ready for the day. Somehow, he suspected that it was going to be a long one. Stifling a yawn, Martin left the mirror and went to wake up Annie. Once she'd been taken care of and put in the living room playpen, he started towards the other bedroom mumbling time to wake the boys or at least his eldest. His mom, he corrected himself absently, though without much force. Rachel woke up, feeling herself being shaken. Hush she mumbled groggily, forcing her eyes open. What met her eyes was the sight of her own face looking back at her, with a smile on its lips. Martin, she remembered clearly. Time to get up sleepyhead Martin whispered in her voice, being careful not to wake Bobby who was still quietly asleep. All right Rachel mumbled, instinctively following the directions of that voice. Her body strolled out of the room, while she began getting dressed. She looked over at Bobby, tempted for a moment to wake him up just so that Martin could get the full effect of being a mother. Besides, she smiled mischievously to herself, it might be funny to watch. However, before Rachel could succumb to her temptation, Martin stuck his head back in and urged her to hurry up. Rachel stumbled to the kitchen, poured herself a bowl of cereal and began eating. It tasted so sweet, but very good. She wasn't used to eating breakfast, or at least not much but now she guessed she was a growing boy and would need it. Besides, she was hungry. While she was eating, Rachel watched Martin, sitting back and sipping at a cup of coffee, seeming like a perfectly normal woman. She couldn't help thinking that her mom looked tired. Rachel gulped, startled by the thought. She reminded herself that it was only her son, but she couldn't help but feeling that he was the mom and she the little boy. That was part of the trade but it still startled her. She frowned thoughtfully as she realized that they'd already spent 24 hours as each other. That was longer than she'd spent traded with her own mother when she was a kid. The first time anyway. Rachel didn't remember it being so strong the last time either, but whether that was because they'd traded for a lot less time, or because they were both girls, she didn't know. And the last time, they traded back before the end of the first day, and Rachel frowned, reminding herself that they still had a week to go. After she'd finished her breakfast, Rachel got up and started towards the living room, only to be intercepted by Martin, who had his arms crossed and was scowling at her. Don't the dishes belong in the sink? he asked her. Rachel glanced back, realizing that she had left the bowl on the table. That was one of Martin's habits, not hers. At least not until now. Feeling rather embarrassed for the reminder, Rachel silently put the bowl where it belonged, then once again started towards the living room. Several minutes later, Martin came into the living room, then let out an audible sigh. Come on he sighed again, pulling a slightly confused Rachel with him to the bathroom. As Martin picked up a brush, Rachel protested but... No buts Martin playfully responded, using one of her own favorite phrases, no way are you going to school with your hair like that Rachel just groaned, but offered no resistance as Martin started brushing her hair. Rachel winced several times as the brush pulled through snags, trying to ignore the small pain. Finally Martin stopped and said that should do it about time Rachel mumbled under her breath, quickly getting out of arm's reach of Martin and going back to the living room to get her stuff for school. Once Rachel had Martin's backpack slung over her shoulder, she started towards the front door, only to an ahem from Martin. She turned and looked at him, seeing his standing there with his hands at his hips and a slight scowl on his face. 
Aren't you forgetting something? He asked in a slightly playful tone. Rachel didn't think so, until she recognized the way he was cocking his cheek to her. Rolling her eyes, Rachel thought that Martin was definitely playing this for all it was worth, then she walked over and gave him a quick kiss on the cheek before leaving. Just as she was going through the door, she heard Martin say have a nice day in school, dear. Martin chucked to himself once his mom was gone, relishing the turnabout. He hadn't even been thinking of that at first, just that she was old enough to clean up after herself or comb her own hair. Then, after he'd already corrected her on both accounts, he realized that very much the same thing had happened numerous times before, but from the other side. Letting his amusement fade, Martin started towards the living room, knowing that Annie should be getting hungry. The rest of the morning went much like the morning before. However, since Martin had done so much the day before, he didn't have quite as much to do this time, though he certainly wasn't going to be left empty-handed. Not with three kids in the house, constantly making a mess for him to clean up. Not that Martin minded the work too much. Strangely enough, doing so much work around the house made him feel needed, filling him with a sense of accomplishment. Rachel glared evilly at the girl sitting in front of her, hating her with a passion. The teacher had just asked a question, and Rachel, feeling rather smug since she had the mind and education of an adult, answered it. Unfortunately, much to her embarrassment, it wasn't the right answer. The laughter of all the students had filled her with shame, making her want to shrink down and disappear. But then the girl with the ponytail, sitting in front of her, had stood up, smirked at her, and then given the right answer to the teacher. God, Rachel hated that girl. Still feeling the eyes of the other students on her, even though it was mostly her own imagination, Rachel scrunched down in her chair, trying to avoid notice. How could she have given the wrong answer, she wondered. She was smarter than all these kids around her, wasn't she? Rachel just bit her lip and looked forward, pretending to pay attention to the Mrs. Bernhardt, while thinking about how she couldn't wait for recess. When recess finally came, Rachel went outside to the playground, glad to get away from that class for a while. While she was sitting on the swing, gently rocking back and forth, she noticed several other boys from her class walking towards her. What's up? She asked them half-heartedly. Not much the one named Sean replied. The other one, a shorter and fatter kid named Tony smirked and said man Cindy made you look stupid Rachel protested, getting annoyed. The last thing she wanted at the moment was to be reminded of what had happened. Unfortunately, Tony didn't take the hint and continued to talk about it, slowly changing his direction until he was taunting Rachel. I can't believe you got outdone by a girl the last being said with disgust. Shut up! Rachel snarled. Make me Tony dared. Rachel glared at him angrily, knowing that if she backed down now, everyone would think she was a chicken especially with Sean right there, helping Tony egg her on. Then without thinking, Rachel pushed Tony, who immediately came at her with a punch. Seconds later, both were on the ground struggling to punch the other. Surprisingly, it was Sean who pulled them apart, warning them that the teachers would see them. Since neither of them wanted to get in trouble, they glared at each other, then turned and went their own ways. For the rest of the day, Rachel started to notice that Cindy, the ponytailed girl in front of her, was brown-nosing. She was kissing up to Mrs. Bernhardt and being a teacher's pet. It annoyed Rachel even more when she noticed that Mrs. Bernhardt seemed nicer to Cindy and to several other girls in the class than she was with the boys. Slowly, Rachel began to fill with resentment that the teacher was playing favorites. She obviously was nicer to them because they were girls. That thought filled Rachel with disgust thinking how unfair that was. It was made even worse when Mrs. Bernhardt corrected Rachel in front of everyone for not paying attention in class. Finally, while they were all working on art projects, something inside Rachel snapped. She looked at the back of Cindy's head, glaring with hate and frustration. Her hand, with the scissors in it, moved almost of its own violation and snipped the ponytail from the back of Cindy's head. Suddenly the room was filled with an ear-piercing scream, and Cindy stood up, flailing her arms wildly and crying. Mrs. Bernhardt hurried over to see what was the matter, and almost immediately saw what that was.
The strands of hair behind Cindy's chair and the scissors in Rachel's hand obviously spoke clearly. Mrs. Bernhardt's words, you are in big trouble now Mr. filled Rachel's ears, and she couldn't help but gulping at the look on her teacher's face. Martin scowled down at Rachel, furious at her. He had to go pick her up from school, less than an hour before she would have gotten out anyway, and that meant finding someone to watch Annie and Bobby, or taking them along. Still glaring at his son-slash-mother, Martin saw that she did look ashamed and very afraid. Her eyes even looked red as if she'd been crying, though Martin had yet to spank her, as much as he desired to. Ignoring Rachel's discomfort, Martin said go to your room, right, this instant almost immediately, she started walking there, but Martin snapped faster anyway. Under his breath he muttered, just wait till your father gets home. It had been bad enough that Rachel not only had to go to the principal's office, but had Martin called as well. Facing him was humiliating, and she couldn't even make herself look him in the eyes. When he'd yelled at her and sent her to her slash his room, she'd felt like she was going to die. She'd half been afraid that he was going to spank her, but later wished that he had. When her dad, Scott, had gotten home, he immediately stormed into the bedroom, a pissed-off look on his face. I can't believe what you did to that poor girl, he said, sounding more disappointed than angry at that moment. How would you like it if someone did that to you? Rachel tried to tell him not much, but she couldn't bring her mouth to actually work. Instead, she gasped for air like a fish out of water. Then her eyes widened in horror as she saw him begin to undo his belt. A motion that she'd seen numerous times before, though only in preparation for punishing Martin or Bobby. No, she gasped out. Please. She begged, to no effect. Scott, no. Her dad at the moment grabbed her firmly, though she tried unsuccessfully to escape. The first strike from the belt stung, but the humiliation and shame were even worse. However, as the second and third strike hit her, the pain began to grow. Her whole rear end felt like it was on fire, making her scream out and beg for mercy. None came. Finally it stopped, after what seemed like a hundred smacks, though she knew that it was closer to ten at most. I'm disappointed dad said quietly before turning and leaving the room. Rachel just threw herself face first onto her bed and cried into her pillow, overwhelmed with shame and helplessness. But mommy. Bobby whined, I don't want to go to bed yet Martin sighed, reaching for the five-year-old tiredly. No buts he told Bobby, it's your bedtime and I'm not in the mood for any arguments. Bobby took a look at Martin and seemed to decide that it wasn't a good time to push it any further. Once Martin had gotten Bobby to bed, and Rachel, who'd been sent to bed early as punishment, he returned to the living room, muttering what a day it had been fine at first, at least until he'd received that call from school. Then he'd had to call several neighbors, looking for someone to watch Annie and Bobby. He didn't want to have to wake her up from her nap just to drag her to school. After that, Bobby had started acting up as well, almost as if whatever had gotten into Rachel had been contagious. He didn't remember ever having done anything like what she'd done earlier, and couldn't understand where she'd gotten it from. After a while, felt some hands on his shoulders, which when he looked up, he saw were attached to Scott. Martin sighed, that feels good Scott just smiled and continued massaging Martin's shoulders, letting the tension start to ease out, and then he climbed onto the couch next to Martin and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Sighing contentedly, Martin leaned up against Scott and faced the TV. For almost half an hour, Martin was leaned up against Scott, feeling rather comfortable. However, Annie's crying for a diaper change told him that their time was over. Don't worry Scott told her, easing his way off the couch, I'll get it Martin thanked him, glad for the chance to take a break from the dirty diapers. But as they say, it was a dirty job but somebody has to do it. Several minutes later, Scott had finished taking care of the diaper and returned to the couch, Annie in hand. Can you say daddy? he asked her, gently rocking her back and forth in his arms, much to her obvious amusement. The baby giggled while Scott played with her, making Martin smile at how cute they looked together. Eventually though, Annie began to yawn and look sleepy. Let's go to Betty by Scott gently told her, getting ready to take her to her crib. Martin watched Scott depart with Annie, then shifted position on the couch until he was comfortable again.
Shortly, Scott was back next to him, and they comfortably leaned against each other. After a while, Martin became aware that Scott's hand was resting on his leg, slowly inching up his thigh. Pretending to ignore the hand, Martin bent over and gave Scott a kiss, meant to be a peck, but ending up much more passionate. While Martin gasped as the pulled apart, a grin on his lips. He couldn't believe how exciting something like a kiss could be. That was horrible, Scott said in mock disgust. When Martin looked at him in confusion, Scott grinned and said, I guess we'll just have to practice some more. Then with that, he embraced Martin tightly, kissing him passionately at the same time. For the next several minutes, Martin grew more and more amazed at just how good his new body could feel. His crotch was getting very wet, and his nipples felt almost like they were going to poke straight through his bra. Finally, Scott suggested that they move to the bedroom. Martin looked at him for a moment, feeling slightly hesitant. Somehow, he knew what was going to come, but wasn't sure that he should. Then Martin thought, what was wrong with it? Scott was his husband after all, wasn't he? Then without consciously planning it, Martin whispered, come on big boy, let's see what you've got. When Martin finally went to sleep later on, it was with great tiredness, yet greater satisfaction. The next morning, Martin managed to get Rachel off to school in time, though she was still sulking and taking her time. He was sure that if she'd taken any longer, she would have missed the bus and he would have had to drive her. But fortunately, she seemed to realize this as well, and decided that the embarrassment of that happening wasn't worth it so hurried to catch the bus. For the rest of the morning, Martin practically hummed to himself as he went about his chores. He felt so good and light on his feet that he couldn't help but be in a great mood. His mood even seemed to rub off on Bobby and Annie, both of whom were perfectly behaved and no trouble at all. Several times, Martin passed by a mirror and stopped to admire himself, fondly remembering the night before and wondering if there might be a repeat that night. Rachel hadn't been happy to leave the house that morning. Something was wrong. Martin was too damn cheerful and awake for first thing in the morning, and she knew that the only time she was usually that cheerful was after having sex. Rachel was startled to realize that Martin probably had, not having thought about him taking over that aspect of her life when they traded. But somehow, that didn't bother her as much as she would have thought, seeming more distant from her. In fact, she realized that the very concept of sex seemed rather vague and uninteresting. At school, Rachel was able to try forgetting about Martin and what was going on at home. She almost felt like she belonged at school, like she really was the boy she seemed to be. Being there gave her a chance to be free from responsibility, to play or just sit back and do nothing but watch someone else do the work. All she had to do was pay attention and occasionally write on some paper. Not a bad life at all, she decided. When Rachel had first walked into class, the scowl that Mrs. Bernhardt directed at her reminded her that the day before hadn't been forgotten. Several of the boys gave her surreptitious thumbs-ups, or faint smiles of approval, while most of the girls gave her dirty looks. Not that Rachel really minded, though she did find the attention slightly uncomfortable. When she sat down in her seat, she noticed that Cindy's hair had been cut into a rather short style since the day before. She couldn't help but smirking faintly, though she tried to hide it. The evil glare that Cindy gave her before trying to ignore her nearly made him laugh out loud within ten seconds of Rachel sitting down, Mrs. Bernhardt demanded Martin. She gestured to a seat up front, this is your new seat. When Rachel didn't move, Mrs. Bernhardt snapped move it Rachel complied, feeling embarrassed at the looks of triumph that the girls in the class were giving, and the chuckles from a number of the students, boys and girls alike. Rachel took a long look around her, then forced herself to face front. She knew that she wasn't going to be able to get away with not paying attention now. Not when she was right in Mrs. Bernhardt's view at all times. Sighing to herself, Rachel thought it's going to be a long day. At least, she consoled herself, it's Friday and that meant no Mrs. Bernhardt the next day. That thought gave her the strength to stay on her best behavior for the rest of the day. That and the fact that Mrs. Bernhardt watched her every minute. That night at dinner, Rachel cringed under the stern and disapproving gaze of Scott. She'd never felt that way about him before, but now, she couldn't he help it.
Whenever she was around either him or Martin, she felt like the little boy she seemed. Her every attempt at acting like her mature self seemed like so much bad acting, doomed somehow to failure. This was proven even more when, in spite of her determination to act like a mature adult, she ended up fighting with Bobby over some stupid toy and got yelled at again. By Martin. She even cringed under his words, instinctively sensing that he was the mommy and the one in charge. Saturday morning, Martin actually managed to sleep in. Albeit only for an hour before he'd had to get up to take care of Annie. As he climbed out of bed, slipping on his robe, he looked at the sleeping figure on the bed and smiled. The night before had been great, and he decided that Scott had earned his right to sleep in. At least for a few hours. But of course, Martin knew that there was work around the house that needed to be done, and he wasn't going to let Scott skate out of it. He remembered that Scott had been promising to clean out the garage for several weeks now, and though his mom had kept letting it slide, he wasn't about to. Martin frowned at the thought of his mom. Whenever he looked at the little boy, his body, he just couldn't picture that as his mom. She felt like his son, and he found it easier to call, and sometimes even think of her, as Martin. Then, upon hearing Annie beginning to fuss in the next room, Martin forgot about what he'd been thinking, focusing instead on his swollen breasts, and the hungry little girl who would soon ease their discomfort. Later that day, Scott, Rachel and Martin were all busy cleaning out the garage. Even little Bobby tried to help, though he got in the way more often than not. When, after several hours of work, they'd finished cleaning out the garage, Scott proudly announced let's go out for dinner great idea Martin quickly agreed, relieved that he wouldn't have to cook dinner and clean up. He'd already done enough cleaning for the day. With that decided, they cleaned up and went to Denny's. But I want to go to McDonald's Bobby whined while they waited for the waitress. Martin silenced him with a look, though only for a few minutes. Soon he was complaining about something else. I'm hungry he whined nearly non-stop while they were waiting for the food to be delivered. Martin shushed Bobby for the hundredth time, reminding him that they were in public and he should behave. Once he thought that was over with, Rachel and Bobby somehow ended up arguing over who could belch the loudest, making Martin sigh with weariness. And I thought that dinner out would be less effort then, to make it worse, Annie started crying. Oh joy Martin mumbled as he picked her up out of the high chair and started towards the bathroom. Somebody needs their ditty changed by the time they got home, Martin was beat and more than ready to relax. Unfortunately, the headache that he developed while at Denny's showed no sign of going away. Especially with Rachel running through the house trying to catch Bobby, both of whom were yelling. Quiet he snapped in annoyance, wincing at the pounding in his skull. Please keep it down, he added a little softer. Rachel just rolled her eyes, muttering what a nag under her breath, then hurried out of the room before Martin decided to pester her about something else. After all, she'd only been having a little fun. What was wrong with that? Once Rachel was out of the room, Martin let out a sigh of relief. For a moment there, it had looked like she was going to talk back. And he wasn't in the mood for that at the moment. Where's the aspirin? Martin mumbled to himself as he started towards the bathroom medicine cabinet. Sunday, they all went to the beach, Scott having made the suggestion that they spend some quality time together. Martin readily agreed, thinking that a day of relaxation and fun was just what he needed. He wasn't too sure about his swimsuit though, complaining that it made him look fat, much to the amusement of Rachel. Last one in the waters a rotten egg Rachel excitedly called, quickly being followed by Bobby and Scott. Martin just paused and watched the family hurry to the water, unwilling to leave Annie laying on their blanket alone. Well, I guess it's just you and me kid Martin told his sister slash daughter before making himself comfortable on their blanket. For the next half hour, he watched his three kids, Scott acting like he was one, playing in the surf. Finally Scott came back up, complaining that he wasn't as young as he used to be, to which Martin gave a knowing smile, saying ain't that the truth with Scott watching Annie, Martin took the opportunity to go wading himself, finding that the water was too cold for actual swimming. And though he didn't stay long, mostly due to Bobby and Rachel splashing him with cold water, he did enjoy himself. By the time that they finally left for home, Martin was feeling more relaxed and in a very good mood.
a mood which he enthusiastically shared with Scott that night once they were alone. For the next several days, Martin continued with his new routine, while Rachel continued with hers. Though Martin found his new role to be very stressful, it was also somewhat satisfying. He actually felt like he was needed around the house for a change and wasn't sure that he could handle going back to being the useless little kid that he had been. Rachel on the other hand was enjoying her vacation, though she wasn't about to admit it Martin. In fact, neither of them had talked about their trade since it had occurred, each pretending that they were who they seemed to be. Finally though, the day had arrived. The agreed-upon week was up and it was time to trade back. Martin was somewhat withdrawn as he got up that morning. He couldn't help but think how strange it would be to turn into a little boy again. Especially after having been an adult woman, and a mother, for a week. But he didn't have much of a choice. A deal was a deal. After giving Scott a passionate goodbye kiss as he left for work, Martin went and retrieved the cup from where he'd hidden it. He held it in his hands, staring at it and feeling tempted. Tempted to hide it again, in a place much more difficult to find. Tempted to stay as he was, the mother and the wife. That was what he felt he should be. But then he reminded himself that it was just part of the trade, not who he really was. With a sigh, he set the cup down on the table. Martin decided that whatever else he did, he still had to take care of his morning routine. He showered and put on his makeup, then got Annie up and fed her. Once that was all done, he quietly crept into his old bedroom, staring at Rachel in his bed. She looked so sweet and innocent while sleeping that he almost forgot the hellion that she'd been for the last week. He didn't really understand that either. When he was the little boy, he'd never been that bad. Could it be that Rachel's subconscious mind had just been taking advantage of the opportunity and cutting loose with all responsibility? With all self-control? Martin didn't know but wondered if that was happening to her, then how much of his own mind was affecting how motherly he'd started acting. Still smiling to himself, Martin gently shook Rachel, waking her up with it's time to get up sleepy head do I have to? She mumbled tiredly, already beginning to turn back over. Yes you have to Martin told her firmly yet gently, pulling her sheets back and adding common, get up. You know what day it is then with that, he turned and left the bedroom. Rachel quietly got up and started to get dressed, trying not to wake Bobby up. She knew that if she did, her mom, Martin, would be unhappy with her and a nice lecture would be forthcoming. Then, as she groggily remembered what day it was, she smiled faintly, knowing that it probably wouldn't matter. Soon, she would be in charge again. A surge of pleasure filled her as she thought about the power she would soon wield again, the authority. Then she paused and realized the stress and hard work that came along with it. The never-ending chores and housework. Other than being yelled at and punished a few times, she'd really enjoyed her vacation. That week, for the first time in a long time, had given her a chance to have fun. To cut loose and not worry about all the responsibility of being a mother. She sighed, knowing that she'd miss the freedom she now had and was about to lose. Once Rachel was dressed, she went into the kitchen to eat breakfast. Martin was already there, sipping at a cup of coffee and playing with the wedding ring on his finger. Morning Rachel half-heartedly mumbled as she sat down, not receiving an answer from Martin. She didn't notice, already having dug into her bowl of cereal. When Rachel's bowl was empty, she hopped off the table, forgetting to put it in the sink again. Wordlessly, Martin picked it up and put it into the sink, then asked Rachel to come back. She paled, nervously eyeing the cup which was clearly visible on the table. It was time. As she moved closer, she noticed that it was already filled with water. It's time, Martin said quietly. Rachel thought that she heard a hint of regret in his voice, but decided that was ridiculous. Why would he want to stay as an old woman, with all that work to do? She didn't really want to go back herself, but it was her life and she didn't feel right forcing it on him. Then, with a slight nod, Rachel picked up the cup and stared at the water that filled it. She could almost sense how special the cup was. Then, with a smile, she held out the cup and said cheers before gulping half of it down. Martin quickly burst through the front door, glad that school was over for the day.
It had been kind of hard to get back into the groove after having been out all week, but at the same time it had felt almost like he was back where he belonged. As he went into the house, he caught himself at the last second, barely stopping the door from slamming shut behind him. He wasn't sure if Annie was asleep or not, but figured that it was best not to take any chances. Um, how was school? His mom asked him, stepping into the room. She looked slightly tired, making Martin smile as he guessed that she'd been busy. Obviously, she'd had a little trouble getting back into her routine as well. Okay, Martin mumbled. She nodded faintly. Then without another word, they went into the kitchen, where Martin got an after-school snack. He looked at his mom, thinking how strange it was to be small again, after having been a grown-up, but he knew that he'd grow up again. This time on his own. And of course, there was always the cup. Martin thought of it with some amusement, knowing that his mom had put it away somewhere safe. He was sure that he could find it if he ever really wanted it for something, but for the moment he was fine. It was sure to make things interesting though, just knowing that it existed, and more so knowing that one day he would inherit it. But for now, he was satisfied to leave the cup hidden, wherever it was. Then the silence was abruptly ended with an ear-piercing scream, which Martin immediately identified as Annie's I want my diaper changed scream. His mom groaned faintly, almost unnoticed, and began to move towards the living room and Annie's playpen. Martin quickly put a hand on her arm, stopping her. I'll take care of it, he told her. Then leaving his mom standing there with a shocked look on her face, Martin went to go take care of Annie. As he picked up his little sister, Martin smiled and thought to himself things are going to be a little different around here from now on he wasn't sure exactly how much, but he knew that they wouldn't ever be the same, for whatever good or bad that was.